illustration. I usually start uh, with the head or the eyes. In this case, I'm um, thinking of an eyeball. And how am I going to present this? these eyes? I'm going to start off, I think I'm going to draw a human face. And a lot of this is memorized uh, over the years with the way the lines go down. But even though you memorize it, you want to vary it, vary it up. So it's not the same look every time. So with the nose, I wanted to give him something different. So I, instead of going straight down with the line, I turned it right away after I came down uh, very shortly there. And this is a, those bags under the eyes that instantly makes the character look older. If you don't, if you want the character to look young, don't put those bags under there. And if you do, you, you're pretty much suggesting because lines are so powerful in cartooning that that would be an older character or a character who just woke up in the morning and has bags under their eyes. So the thing about this program is there's not a whole lot of room to work with. In other words, I could probably uh, extend beyond this guy's face and create his whole uh, torso and, uh, and legs and everything else but right now I'm just going to stay on a single spot and not move the, the canvas and just so you can see everything all at once. So if it's too big then you're not going to see the finished product only because this program pen, pencil I'm sorry which is a really cool program for free. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think it has a zoom. I, I'd have to double check. I think it, well, yeah, it does have a camera, so it does have zoom. That's cool. I haven't really done any animation with it yet. I did practice uh, cell animation, but it's a, it's a little bit cumbersome when you're just getting started. But it seems pretty intuitive, uh, except for the keyframes. For some reason, it's not very intuitive. Not like uh, some of the other programs I've worked on. I think if I practice more, I think it'd probably make a lot more sense. But what's great about it is it captures the pen tablet. When I pick up the pen, captures the lines pretty much exactly like I would do on pencil. The only limitation is it can't keep up with my hand as quick as I flick the lines. I like to flick the lines and that gives an expressive quality that's very difficult to, to replicate if you're doing animation. So. If you are going to do animation, you'd want to have a consistent, slower pace to your lines. Because if you flick them, you're losing control at that point. When you let go, trying to replicate that, you'd have to go over that line slowly, and you're not going to get the same energy from the line. <clears throat> In other words, it's going to flare out and fade out at the end of the flare or it's going to have a certain curve to it that you, that's pretty tricky to, to replicate if you're going slow with the pencil. So that would be the disadvantage and advantage of uh, flicking the lines like I did right there. Of course, you don't want to have parallel lines too often. That was something I, I learned in college. Even though I was applying it all along, I had a... Uh, I don't, don't remember his name, but he was a Disney animator at one time. And he uh, really stressed a lot of Disney uh, animation rarely ever has parallel lines. Because parallel lines doesn't look that interesting uh, for um, 
a human character or an, a creature or animal or I guess for buildings it's appropriate but and maybe cars and stuff like that but anyway uh, if you are gonna make a human you can see there's there aren't a whole lot of parallel lines in this character and here we are coloring it in just like you would if you were doing cell animation later on I'll I'll bring uh, one of these uh, illustrations well cartoons line drawings into a, a photo editor which you can really get more accurate uh, shading with this program here you're limited like I'll try to give them some shadows here but it erases the there's no opacity so I can't just uh, keep the black lines there I have to stay within the lines unlike with the photo editor called GIMP G-I-M-P which is a, uh, a general use uh, free program that a, a very good developer has put together and of course has a lot of the same benefits of Photoshop which is a Adobe program which is uh, more expensive I have a Adobe 5.5 on my old computer and I wanted to bring it to this uh, newer computer but they want you to buy a whole new Photoshop 